Hello everyone, welcome back to Eat Sleep Brief. I think this is probably going to be one of my best DIY videos. At least I can tell you for sure it's probably going to be the most helpful DIY videos that can actually save your aquarium. Um, and in case you guys haven't noticed, uh, it's going to be against the power outage. So a lot of us encountered this, so it's better to be prepared. Yes, there's a few um, of these battery backups out on the market, but for us that don't want to spend the money or just... You know it doesn't work with your equipment this hopefully you know get you an idea to uh get you how to make your own battery backup so real quick we're going to run through everything i'm not going to go into too much detail so starting off here we have a pelican case uh, it's a little water a small waterproof pelican case it doesn't need to be um, waterproof you just need somewhere to hold it of course if you don't want to use this you don't have to you can just have the battery on its own uh, but that's really up to you <clears throat> followed by that we have uh, automatic battery float switch. This is by Centec. Both of, actually a lot of these products were bought um, on Harbor Freight. Um, this one actually is sold by Harbor Freight, but I got it on Amazon. This one I physically walked into Harbor Freight. Same with this, um, and same with this. Uh, I am going to have descriptions of everything down below, so that'll make it a little bit easier. So you do need a float switch. This is going to keep your battery fully charged. So when it does, uh, the battery does go out, uh, your battery is fully charged and ready to go. Obviously, the most important thing is going to be the battery. This battery here is a 7 amp hour, so that's about 7,000 milliamp. And I've tested this battery on a Gyre uh, 230, and it does 30 plus hours, uh, running at, I think, 20%, if I'm correct. So you can e either piggyback two batteries. Obviously, that'll give you about 60 hours, three batteries, uh, give you more time, so on and so forth. So I'm going to show you guys how to wire that up. Next, you're going to need a battery meter. This is not really necessary but at least this allows you to look at the um the condition of the battery as far as if it's full if it's almost empty um, and kind of gives you an idea of that but again this is not necessary followed by that you need obviously the main power jack now this is going to be specific to whatever you're trying to back up in my case it is for a gyre so you gyre users out there uh, this is a 2 or 2.5 barrel connector I'm going to have links of everything in the description to help you guys out, so don't worry if I'm going too fast. Then you are going to need some assorted fuse, um, fuses. Specifically for the gyre, I actually reached out to uh, gyre and they said you need at least a 5 amp fuse. So you can either buy an assortment or just go for 5 amp fuses and you need one of those. You're going to need a fuse holder. So this is where you put the fuse inside just in case if anything happens or short circuits, it'll uh, cut off the battery so no more damage is done. Um, and again, this one here is for safety. You don't absolutely need it, but it's good to have. Followed by that, we have the terminal connectors. We're going to be using that to connect everything, obviously, to these terminals here. And then lastly, you do need, obviously, some wire. Um, and the most important thing that is not in here is a soldering gun. Uh, you are going to need a soldering gun. I'm going to help you guys as best I can to show you guys how to solder. So let's get everything out of its box and uh, show you guys how to get this going. So here for one of the first steps you want to do is first clear up the, your workspace, get everything out of the way. Um, make sure you got a nice clean workspace so you don't get confused. Um, I honestly, guys, I wouldn't be worried about getting shocked with this. Um, it's a 12 volt battery. Um, even if you do touch both leads, nothing's going to happen to you. Again, it is 12 volt. You can see here, you can bridge your hand between them. Nothing happens. It's low voltage. Uh, so don't be afraid of that. Um, you may get it to spark if you do have two metal pieces touch it. Um, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward. So one of the first things obviously we are looking to do is get the the um, the battery to fit inside uh, this case. So if you, I don't know if you guys can pick this up on camera, but there's little squares here that you're able to section off. So the first things you want to, or the first thing you want to do is kind of get a rough dimension of your battery and then pick off the squares. Now the very end pieces, you're gonna have to cut off with some scissors. Um, but other than that, they each are individual squares and you're better off doing it too small because then obviously you can remove it versus doing it too big and then having to add them again. They won't fit as nice. I mean, they kind of will, but um, if anything, undersize it and then you can easily make it fit. But as you can see here, this battery is not moving absolutely anywhere. You can see here, I left a little bit of extra space here on the top for the wires that come in and I didn't put, there's one more layer of foam here. The reason I didn't do that because I want the charger to be hot glued uh, probably around here and also allows me to manage the wires um, all inside here. So when this thing is closed up, that's really all you see. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm trying to see if I'm forgetting anything. Other than that, right now we're gonna kind of move forward to soldering. 
Now for you guys that are comfortable with soldering, um, there's other techniques, there's crimpers you can use. Um, there's, um, I don't even know what the things are called to, to uh, get wires together at Home Depot. I've seen them before. What I recommend is, you know, soldering is not very difficult. Find a friend, find a family member, or worst case scenario, kind of bundle them up with your finger and then use um, electrical tape to get it going. Uh, but today I'm going to be using the soldering method. So let me get the, the rest of the equipment we need. I'm not going to be going into too much detail as far as showing you guys how to solder, but I am going to be showing you guys uh, step by step so later you can do it on your own. So from your bundle of, uh, if you saw the beginning of the video, from your bundle of connectors that I got from Harbor Freight, you want to locate the quarter inch um, female connector. That's this here. So this pretty much just connects to the battery like so. The reason I do this versus hard soldering this, you can hard solder it. I've actually done one in the past that I hard soldered, but in the future, you know, if I wanna change out a battery or whatever, I quickly just disconnect this, order me a brand new battery from Amazon for I think like 15, 12 bucks, I think it was. Um, and then you got a brand new battery. So it's a lot, obviously a lot easier just putting a connector. So the first thing we're gonna have to do, locate your quarter inch connector as well, locate your uh, fuse holder and also go ahead and install your five amp fuse. So this is a five amp fuse. Make sure you install this bad boy and then just screw it up. Don't, you know, over tighten it, but just screw it nice and snug. And then I've also went ahead and shorted the wire or shortened the wire because um, I want it to fit like that versus earlier it was a little bit longer. Um, but then this, of course, if you set up your battery different on the build you do, this is gonna vary, so you may not need to cut it. Um, but one of the first things you want to do, you want all the all your power coming out of here. Because if you don't do that, obviously the fuse isn't gonna do its job. So from this point, or from everything past this point, the fuse is gonna uh, be taking care of the battery as well as your equipment. So if there is a short circuit or whatever, the fuse pops and you don't damage anything. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our connector. And now I am gonna be hard soldering this. That's why I have my solder here on the right. And you can kind of see it coming out from there. So let me quickly solder this up. If you guys wanna crimp it, you're more than welcome to crimp it. Um, you can just get some pliers and quickly crimp it. But like I said, I do have a solder here. So let me uh, solder it up here real quick. So this is how it's gonna look complete. You may notice I took the, uh, the insulation or the plastic protector around the connector off. It looked like this blue piece, but I just, easily remove that with some scissors and I'm just going to show you guys once or one of them how it looks I'm going to complete the next one because again uh, I don't want this video to be too lengthy but in essence that's exactly what it's going to look like and this is literally it's impossible it's never going to come off from here unless it breaks uh, so this guarantees a nice uh, tough, uh, tough fit so you know that just guarantees that it, it's absolutely never going to fall off so all there is to do right now is connect this here once this is done, what I'm going to do, I'm going to work on the opposite end on the uh, this side. I'm going to use this bad boy here and then uh, I'm going to show you guys once that's complete. And then after that, the next step is going to be install the charger, wire that in and then get our main leads um, coming out. Connect them to our two or 2.5 uh, barrel connector. And believe it or not, guys, that's really going to be it. So here, the, you guys are probably wondering where exactly are you going to get that black wire from. It's going to come from the spool of wire we have. So here you can see it's two of them. Split it. You get your, the black one out. And this is going to be the one. Um, obviously, I need to expose the wires, solder it up. And then we're, once we hook it up, <clears throat> it's going to be going to the battery. And then we're officially going to have two leads coming out. Um, a black lead and a red lead coming from the battery. Okay, so here you guys can see both connectors installed like so. Now here you wanna be a little bit careful. You wanna make sure if you do expose these wires like this to work on, that you don't expose them both. Or if you do expose them both, make sure they don't touch because if they do touch, you're gonna to get some, a little spark and the fuse is actually gonna burn in here. So that'll be an easy fix. Just put another fuse and you're good to go. Uh, but typically the rule of thumb, the way I do it, I always only expose one first, which is the red one. Um, I work on that one first, followed by that, I expose um, this bad boy here. <coughs> Before continuing, I recommend you hold these down um, just so they don't get disconnected. So if you do have a power outage and these bad boys aren't connected, obviously this isn't gonna work. So you can leave them as is, but I, I guess a really you know, good safety precaution, wrap the battery in electrical tape, just this part of it, um, hot glue it, or use something to ensure this stays in place. 
What I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna actually wrap it in electrical tape, just this portion of it, um, about a few turns to at least hold these down like so, so they don't get disconnected. If I do need to replace the battery, cut off the electrical tape, take these out, and then I'm done with it. So for you guys that do want a quick visual reference of how that looks, you can see it here. I just wrapped it a few times and this ensures that this connector, unless you really tug on it, that's the only way you're gonna get it out. Um, so the only thing to do right now is we can get the battery situated back um, inside the case and then I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna uh, continue the wiring from there. So here, moving on to the next step, remember only expose um, one of them first until you're done and you seal that one and then we move on to the next step. The next thing to do is this is where we're gonna make all our connections here, right to this point. So right now is when we're gonna to have to connect our battery meter. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut off these alligators right here, cut the other one off right here. And obviously again, working with the red one first, I'm gonna complete the red one. Um, also, when you are done with that, if you are gonna use heat shrink, be sure to install the heat shrink um, at this point, because once you do it, you can't put on the heat shrink. If you're using electrical tape, obviously you can wait till the end to do that. Um, but again, what we're gonna do, we're gonna nip these alligator clips right here. We're gonna solder them to here. We're gonna connect this red um, lead to there. And then our main leads are gonna head out to, to the um, gyre, which is this bad boy. We're gonna solder this up, get it hooked up to our main leads because we have to make that connection at this point here. So we're gonna be connecting three wires to this one red wire on the red. And actually one thing I did, I don't know if you guys noticed, I removed the little vent screw that actually comes in here. This is where all the wires are gonna be coming out. Um, so this is where the battery meter wire is gonna be coming out. This is where the charging lead wire is gonna be coming out, as well as the main power wire that's gonna uh, power the gyre. Um, it's gonna be coming out through there. So you can either use that hole or if you wanna make an external hole in a different area. And um, then when I am done, I am gonna seal it with silicone. So again, it is waterproof and no water uh, does get in it. All right guys, so we got all three main leads installed. So the first red lead is gonna be the charger. The second red lead is gonna be your um, battery meter. And the third red lead is gonna be your main output, which again is gonna be going out to the gyre. Now all three of these, you can I don't know if you guys can see, but I soldered them up to the one red lead coming out from the battery, which has the fuse right in the middle. So if there's any shorts, so obviously uh, the fuse will blow and then you just replace a fuse and you know you save your electronic. Now one thing that's very important before you solder anything, be sure that the leads that are gonna be running outside of the battery box are ran through this little hole here. Um, if not this hole, whatever hole you create in this uh, box or anything you use. Uh, so in my case, I ran the battery meter and ran this because obviously once you solder it, there's gonna be no way to feed it back through unless you're able to fit that connector, which I don't think will fit through there. Um, a quick tip I want to give you guys, you're going to notice there's a little brass fitting that the screw grabs onto um, that sits on the inside of here. It sits on the inside. So what I went ahead and did to actually remove it, you can see this is how it looks once you remove it. I just imagine if this was installed there and this is on the outside, I screwed it in about, so I screwed it in about a quarter of the way. And just imagine this as if it was installed there. Then I went outside, I stood the box up, got a hammer and just some, you know, some hits on it. Didn't have to be too hard hits, just how to get a good rhythm on it. And then it just popped under. So then I opened it and clear removed it. So what that does, it allows you to run all these wires um, without any issues. Also, I was a little bit worried about the threads cutting the wires. So I just figured removing it. But if you're gonna create a hole somewhere else in the box or your box doesn't have that, then obviously you don't need to worry about that. But be sure you feed these leads first because again, once you solder, it's gonna be really difficult. Before you start soldering anything, if you are gonna use heat shrink, that's the first thing you wanna put on there because once you solder it, there's no way to get the heat shrink on there. And then obviously we put the heat shrink over like that and then we get the heat and then we shrink it. You can see on the black one, I already installed it. Um, so once that's complete, I'm gonna put some heat to this bad boy. It's gonna shrink down and I'm gonna complete all the black leads again. We're looking for three of the black leads like so. And we're gonna be soldering those up to this one black lead coming directly from the battery. So once that's complete, I'm again gonna heat shrink it. And we're pretty much gonna be done with this um, DIY battery, guys. I know it's a little bit intimidating, but trust me, we're almost there. Stick with me um, and yeah, let's get right to it. 